Our first house call today is in West Dennis, Massachusetts, where Len and Suzanne Media Villa need some help to build back stairs for their front porch. Hi, Ron, we're just getting ready for you. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Suzanne? Good. Hi, Ron. Len? Oh, man, I can, ah, I can smell the ocean from it's, here. We, we must here. be very close, it's huh? It's here. Can we see it from up here? Yep. Okay, I want to go up there and get a view a little okay. bit later on. Show okay. me the project. Sure. Come on back. You built this house yourself? Yes, we did. Ah, uh, this is it, huh? Yeah. So the stairs are going to, what, go right down here? Right okay. down here to this landing? To the landing, and we're going to put a 4x4 four four post here. And one here. Okay. And we want to tie that into to this area here with this post. So this all goes, the railing yes, comes out? all four of those. Okay. Yep. Now, instead of pouring concrete down here, you decided to put these pavers in, right? Yes. Right. Yep. On sand. Right on the sand. Which you've got plenty of here in the cave, right? It's all sand, yep. Okay, well, let's grab some materials, guys, and get to work, all right? Okay. Okay. Okay, let me drop that back in there, would you? Sure will. And Suzanne, if you'd put the string around here. Now, this is what's going to actually support the stairs. It's the bones of the stairs, if you would. If would. Len bought pre-cut oh, stringers for this job, and while the pre-cuts make the job easier, they do require that the landing at the bottom of the stairs be at just the right height. In this case, we have to raise the landing, which is made of concrete pavers, by adding sand underneath. Then what we need to do, in, in effect, is to make an extension to your rim joist there, kind of a ledger. Then we attach this assembly to the rim joist with rust-resistant screws. Now I've marked the location of the stringers. Actually, we're going to use four of them in this stairway. One here, 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 and here. The reason I've done that now is I'm going to be attaching this to the rim joist with carriage bolts. I don't want those carriage bolts to be in the way of the stringers. Now it's time to attach the first stringer. And I I've temporarily a attached a joist hanger to the top of the stringer, which will hold it in place while we drill holes for lag screws. With everything properly positioned, I drill clearance holes through the rim joist and pilot holes in the end of the stringer. Okay, we're gonna take this off now. Now I can remove the temporary joist hanger. Now I'm going to drill what's called what I call a clearance hole. I want this to be able to slip right through this board here mm -hmm. and only bite into the, uh, the stringer. So we use a larger drill. There you go. I'm going to hold this up here and you put it through. Next, we attach hex head lag screws. This will make the permanent attachment. Good. This give you a sense of accomplishment, <laughs> satisfaction. You got it, Suzanne? Yeah. Last one? Okay, great. So. With all four okay, stringers attached, it's time to now install the a, risers. To avoid rust and corrosion, we'll use stainless steel screws. Okay, Suzanne, why don't you drive some? Have you done this before? Not with this type of drill. Okay, this is a special square head driver, stainless steel screws. These don't strip out as easily as the Phillips, so give these a try. Good. Easy, easy. A little more. A little more. Good. Excellent. Just right. Looking good. Okay, now it's time for the treads. This is a stair tread, guys. This is the one we walk on, of course. I want to make sure that the overhang is the same on both sides. It's a 2 by 12 pressure treated. It should be about a half inch, Len. Okay, there's a half inch. Okay. Suzanne, if you'll check over there. When you guys tell me it's straight. Half inch here. Okay. I'll draw a small line here. That's right down the center of the stringer. And then we'll attach this with some more of these stainless steel screws. Good. Now we'll do this for each one of these stringers, okay? Folks, it's time to cut away the old rail. So Len, ah, <laughs> let's let Suzanne do this. This is a reciprocating saw, okay? Although Suzanne had never used a power saw before, it didn't take her long to get the hang of it. And in the short time it took to remove the railing, she'd become pretty comfortable with this power tool. Did it. You did do it. <laughs> this machine is mean, but not too mean for you. Before we put on this final tread, we're going to install this post, which will be the lower post for the handrail. So, Len, if you can hold that right there, this is a piece of four by four. There you go. Here's a clamp. Just clamp that in place. And Suzanne, if you take once the, level. the post is plumb or vertical, right there. we drill the holes for carriage bolts. Then Suzanne snugs them up with a socket wrench. Meanwhile, I'll trim the ends of the existing railings that we cut using my Japanese handsaw, and then round the ends using a jigsaw. 
Before we can install the final tread, we need to notch the ends so that it can fit around the posts. Now this is going to be one part of the handrail, guys. So it's important right now to sort of figure out what our basic angles are going to be. Uh, Suzanne, hold that right there for me, right at the front edge of that post, will you? And I've measured up the same distance on this one as from here to here. Okay, you got that? Yep. All right. So let me draw this angle right here. This bevel gauge will allow me to transfer the angle I just drew on the railing to the power miter box. Swing the bed until the edge of this cut groove right here lines right up with that bevel gauge. With the angle set, the cuts are made. Now the angle should be an exact match. Perfect. Oh. Before we attach the railing, I make an angled cut on the top of the post. Then we screw the top rail in place. Good. Okay, let's take the clamp off. Len, why don't you put the other two screws in and I'll uh, start cutting the top of the handrail. Well, as the sun is going down, we're putting on the last few pieces. This is the top of the handrail right here. Now, we want this to overhang about 3 eighths of an inch. I've set our combination square up for that. There we go. Okay, Suzanne, can you hold that right there? Just one second. Once the handrail is centered and clamped into place, Suzanne attaches it to the top right. railing using those right. stainless steel screws. Very nice. Well, I was going to head down the road this morning, but you know, even for me, some of these projects just take longer than you think. So I'm going to head over and wake up Len and Suzanne in a moment, and we're going to finish up those steps right after I uh, have some breakfast. Hey, Lenny! Suzanne! Good morning! Good morning, Hi, guys. Ron. Good morning. Ready to go to work? Sure are. Come on down. Oh, Coffee, thank Ron. you very much. Good morning, guys. What Good a morning, glorious Ron. day this is, huh? All right, let's just pick this up where we left off on the handrails, or that lower section of the handrails. Okay. okay. Before it got too dark uh, yesterday, right we'd measured and cut the lower railing. So all we have to do this morning is attach it. There we go. Okay, then if you'd uh, do the two down there at the bottom, sir. Will do. And I'll grab the other rails. Well, look at what you two have done, huh? <laughs> Can you imagine this? Now, yesterday there was nothing here. Now you got steps. Yep. Fantastic job, guys. Yeah. I had a good time. Thanks, so Ron. Did we. A lot of fun.